So for today's project, I'm going to be making really quick, fast and easy, cheap DIY ugly sweater. And I thought I would show it just because it kind of matches the fleece PJs that I made for my family. Right? I don't know. I think it kind of matches. So when today's Tuesday, when I figured out on Monday that my kids needed an ugly sweater for school on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, I ran to Walmart and I picked up pretty much everything for this project. Yeah, was found at Walmart. Some of some of the things I had, but everything I did did have was from Walmart. I know like I watched a lot of videos trying to look up how to make a kid's ugly sweater in like a like really quick. And this is a little different, so I thought I would post this, but I have to make my older son's one. So this is my younger son's one. This is just a sweater that I bought at Walmart. It's for my seven year old. So I got a medium size eight just so that it's a little bit bigger or looser fit. And all this is felt pom pom balls that I bought there. Okay, so the sweater was $6.98 and these are Hawaii prices. I don't know, Walmart on the mainland might be cheaper. These pom poms were $2.12 for all of this. I'm using Feasible Bond, which is like um, just to stick on the Christmas tree. That was $2.67. The felt I had from before, like an earlier project, and that was probably like a dollar ninety-nine, maybe a dollar each. So you would need one green and maybe a white and a red, whatever color you want the presents to be and yellow. I highly suggest just looking for things around your house. Like I had a lot of like random stuff, but I didn't use it. Like a lot of the videos I watched about how to make the ugly sweater, it's more just hot glued on. And that's fine for like if you're just going to wear it for one day or a weekend or something. But I actually wanted it to go with the pants. So I want it to be something that can be washed in the washing machine and that'll last a little bit longer. Oh, the ribbon are these off-ray ribbons that I also bought at Walmart. I think they're like a dollar each, maybe a dollar ninety-nine. They're really cheap though for a whole spool. The Velcro I had. These this is just iron-on Velcro. Any kind of Velcro or I don't know, whatever fastener you want would work. And I already had red thread and of course white thread. So I'll just show you what I'm gonna do. I have the size 10 to 12 for my 11 year old and this is pretty self-explanatory i'm just gonna kind of just show you what i did and then i think only the presents are a little weird and that's where i kind of went a little overboard you don't have to do that that's totally extra okay so i have all these pieces i'm just gonna put the pom-poms on the side for now so we're just going to put the christmas tree in the middle and there's no real right way or wrong way to do this I'm just going to eyeball it. I also have my Cricut Easy Press Mini and I'm going to set it to the highest setting and get it preheated. So if you're just going to do this for one day, you could totally tacky glue it, hot glue it, whatever you want. But I do want to make it so they can wash it and wear it again. So one way I thought to do it was to iron it on and this is not perfect. This works okay this may not last so on this on this sweatshirt if it starts to peel off like it's holding pretty well but it's kind of like peeling like right there i think when i'm gonna buy some green thread and just like hand top stitch it or maybe sewing machine top stitch it if i can get the same green but for now just to hold it in place i'm just gonna use this bond bondable or feasible bonding web and sticking it on the wrong side of the felt. So, I mean, I just cut out this um, Christmas tree and I just drew it freehand, of course. Just gonna stick this on the back. Just trying to like push it down. I'm just gonna quickly flip it over and hopefully it stays. Also, this is an ugly sweater, so I'm not like stressing about everything. I'm going to put my easy press mat underneath. Okay. And I'm just going to, once you get it how you want it, 
I'm going to put this Teflon sheet over and we're just going to hold it for 10 seconds in each spot. I probably should use my regular easy press since it's such a big area, but oh well. Okay, my phone just ran out of memory, so I had to delete a bunch of stuff. But all I did was turn it inside out and I went ahead, put use a Teflon sheet and ironed all over again for 10 seconds each section. So I'm going to turn it right side out again. Okay, so it looks pretty stuck, which is nice. So now we're going to stick on the star. I obviously just hand cut this myself. Um, which way is a good way. So I'm just going to put some of this on there. I don't want it to stick out if possible. Put it where I want it. Make sure all the webbing is underneath and then iron it on. Okay, so at this point you can go ahead and machine top stitch if you want. Um, I don't have my green thread yet, so I'm not going to do it yet and i think hand stitching it like with a needle and thread and just going around won't take that long and it might add to the kitschiness of this project so now we're just going to arrange our pom-poms and i had some sequins too that we could use i'm just i didn't want to sew on like little pieces of sequins i figure these big balls of pom-poms would be easier to do so just kind of place them how you would want. They're going to move, but I just wanted to see if that looks good. I have a whole bag here. We wanted to add more. So I'm just going to sew these on by hand. I'm going to double up the thread, meaning just, you know, using a double thread, tying a knot at the end. And whenever I hand stitch things, I like to use a thicker thread or a higher quality thread. And this is a Gutterman quilting thread there 100% cotton and we're just going to stitch them on I'll show you with this big yellow one I'm going to go from the bottom and then try to aim for the middle of the pom prom I'm just going to kind of do like a button so like a cross or like an X around the center of the pom-pom because the pom-pom is, you know, like loose at the end. It's the middle center that's holding all the fibers together that you want to get around and that'll kind of lock it on there. So you can play with it and see if it's secure. And if it is, then we're just going to tie it off. So how I do that is I pick up a little piece of the material and without pulling it all the way through, I'm going to take the part that's connected to the last stitch and I'm going to wrap it around the needle three times and then pull the needle out. I don't know what that's called, but just tying it off. And so that you don't have all these little threads sticking out, I kind of go back in and come out and then I pull it tight and I cut it close to the fabric that way the the loose tail is like somewhere in there so to tie the knot I just put it around my finger and then roll it off and that creates a nice big knot so it won't go through your fabric and then kind of got to arrange it again so I know where I want Pom-poms. I think I'll do the big ones first. So I'll do this red one. And the white thread pretty much disappears in the pom-poms. Even the little ones. You could go around more times if you want, but I feel, especially with the big ones, for like for a little cross is good enough. And by hand sewing these um, pom-poms on, you are also securing the tree. So even if it kind of gets loose during the day with the iron on, the we're sewing it on pretty much. This would be a good day for a thimble, but I lost mine somewhere. <laughs> so I'm all done sewing the pom-poms on. 
I'm going to put my needle back as you always should. So you don't lose your needles. I think I made this needle book in another tutorial. I'm not sure, but it comes in really handy. So it's all nicely kept in here and it's super cute. Okay, some other ideas I was thinking of was getting this kind of ribbon. And if I use plain pom-poms, like maybe this kind of pom-poms, maybe I would do this like tinsel or ribbon. But I think these with the little fuzzy things kind of add enough. But what I was going to do is do a gather stitch, which is like a four millimeter stitch, pull it so that it's all gathered and go across. I guess I could still do that, but then I have to do the other one too. So yeah, it's okay. But it, you know, this would have added a little bit if you just have some ribbon and you wanted to add some sparkle. Okay, so now I saw this and I'm like, oh, I want to add something else, of course. And so I added on these little presents. So here's one that's done. This is just a piece of felt. So I had a felt this size because they come in sheets and I folded it in two thirds. So pretty much just this and this. And then I cut off two pieces since I'm making two. And then I just did a zigzag stitch down and got some of this ribbon and sewed it on there. So I will show you how I'm doing it with this one. I figure it'd be easier because I'm going to use white ribbon and white thread on a red felt. So I'm just going to sew this on the sides to create the pocket. So I'm going to try to do this really fast because I got to go and pick up the kids. I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch. So now we're going to look at the front and measure out some ribbon. So measure this way. And then when I measure it from the top to the bottom, I'm going to go a little bit over. Like right there. And so that my ends don't fray, I'm just taking a lighter. I'm just going to singe the ends real quick. And then I'm going to tie a tiny little bow. You can do it however you want. I just kind of do this, go around. And then pull and then adjust it. And also melt the edges. Okay, so now I'm going to pin this together. I'm going to do the um, up and down one first. And there is a right side and a wrong side. So make sure this shiny side is up. I'm going to pin this just to the top layer. You do want to make sure that it's all the way to the bottom though. So the first thing we're going to do is sew on a top stitch setting the one going sideways. Okay, and now we're going to go and sew all the way down. And when you get to the edge, make sure you're not sewing this part there. But if you can, we're going to pull it open so that we can sew that excess. Then when you get to this part, we're going to add the bow. So I'm just going to hold it on the sides and then turn crank it, lift up your presser foot, push it under because it's not going to go over that little knot like on its own, or at least my machine won't do that. And then hand crank it again to lock it in and then start sewing. 
So when we get to the edge, I'm going to pull this pocket a little bit out. So we can sew all the way to the edge of the ribbon. Okay, so now you have your cute little present. So now I have some iron-on Velcro. And I'm just going to use a tiny, tiny bit of this. I'm literally just going to cut off like not even half an inch. I have my iron set on high again. So I just peel off the backing because it's hard to peel off the backing when it's such a little piece and to do it twice. Okay, so I'm going to stick this in the middle on the bottom. You could just use like the teeth side on the felt. It will stick, but it will make it like kind of hairy or messy after a time. So I'm just going to iron this on. The Velcro can pretty much take a lot of heat, but it's mostly your whatever you're using. Just be aware of that. You don't want to melt any of your stuff. Okay, after I just said that, I melted the Velcro. So we're going to get another little piece. Oh my gosh, this did not happen to me last time. Only when I'm rushing to get out the door. So I'm pretty much just going to put it right back on that spot. Hope it doesn't look weird from the front. I know last time I ironed it this way, that's what happened. Okay, so I did 10 seconds this time. Okay, so now you have a little Velcro pocket. Okay, so we have our sweatshirt and the pockets with the Velcro. And now we're just going to pin the pockets or the presents wherever you want. So I, I'm just doing two. I'm probably just gonna put it right in the center and we're gonna open it up and pin it. Okay, so now I'm going to just stitch like an eighth of an inch or as close as I can to this zigzag down here, down here, down here, and then right above the pocket line so that it's stable. Like. You could just do it that way, but then it kind of is flimsy here. So we're going to stitch all the way around on both sides or both pockets. Okay, so I have my needle aligned. I'm doing a four millimeter like basting or top stitch. Sometimes when I know the long stitch is going to go over the edge, I switch it to like a smaller stitch, like a two, do one hand crank and then switch it back to four. So go one stitch above the edge of the pocket. Turn it. I know it's a lot of fabric. And then stitch across, not on this part. Okay, so here are the pockets with the Velcro. And everything is on really secure. And this is my older son's sweatshirt with my younger son's shorts. That's why it looks so tiny. But I think it matches. So after they work to school tomorrow, they can hopefully work to sleep if it's cool enough. And in the pockets, I was thinking you could just put like a little tree in there. Some of their favorite chocolates. Of course, make sure they're out before you throw this in the wash. But I think it'd be really cute to work to school tomorrow. So yeah, let me know if you create this project. And... I'll try to be making videos while the kids are home from break, but it, it'll be hard. So if I don't see you before then, have a Merry Christmas and I'll see you in my next video.